Hi everyone, it's Christy, and in this video I'm going to go through everything you need to know from Unit 4 in AP Calculus. And check the description below for videos I've linked on these various topics. So let's get to it. First is how to interpret the meaning of a derivative in context. And you would be asked this question in an application problem where you're asked to interpret the meaning of your answer in context of the problem. So first, it's important to understand what the derivative represents. And f prime of x can be rewritten as dy dx, and as we see here, f prime of x is the rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable, and oftentimes the independent variable could be time. And so your units of f prime of x will be the units of whatever is y, the dependent variable, divided by the units of x or divided by the units of your independent variable, again, often time. And what's important to know for these types of problems is how to write a sentence for your answer. So the sentence should be in this format, the independent variable. So whatever they're talking about in the problem is, and then you would write the word increasing or decreasing based off of whether f prime ends up being a positive number or a negative number at a rate of, and this is where you would give your answer for f prime of x, make sure to include correct units, and this value you will always give a positive value. If your derivative comes out to be negative, this is where you would say decreasing at a rate of, and then you'd still use a positive number here for the derivative, and then you would say at what moment, often again at what moment in time. So this would be at your dependent variable x, whatever that is, and make sure to include units. The next one is a biggie, position, velocity, and acceleration. Position is often denoted s of t, or I've also seen x of t or y of t, depending if the object or particle is moving along the x-axis, in which they use x of t, or the y-axis when they use y of t. This represents the location of the object or the particle. If the position is a positive number, that means your particle is to the right of the origin if moving along the x-axis, or above the origin if moving along the y-axis. If your object or particle has a negative position, this would indicate the particle is either to the left of the origin or below the origin. Next is velocity, and velocity is often denoted v of t. And velocity is the rate of change or derivative of position. And it'll tell you the direction of movement of the object or the particle. So velocity happens to be a positive number, that means your object is either moving right or moving up, depending if your object is moving horizontally or vertically. Likewise, if velocity is negative, that means your object is moving either left or down. And then finally, if velocity is zero, that means your object is not moving and your object is at rest. And finally, acceleration. Acceleration is represented by a of t. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, or the derivative of velocity, or the second derivative of position. So if given the position function and asked to find acceleration, you would find the second derivative, and if given velocity and asked to find acceleration, you would take the first derivative. Some of the questions that you may be asked involving acceleration is whether the object or the particle is speeding up or slowing down. And to answer those questions, you would want to look at the signs of both velocity and acceleration. If acceleration and velocity have the same sign at that particular time value, then the particle or the object would be speeding up. However, if acceleration and velocity have opposite signs at that given time, then your object would be slowing down. Next up is related rates, and I consider this one of the hardest topics of Unit 4 in AP Calculus. And I'm going to go through the steps you should follow if you come to a problem involving related rates. First, I would draw a picture. It's always helpful to see the visual of what's going on. Next, I would write a formula. So depending on what's happening in the problem, the formula you may write is area, area of a square, area of a rectangle, or volume, volume of a cone, for example, or the Pythagorean theorem. So maybe the problem involves some sort of right triangle, and you would say x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If your scenario had a situation where you would label your picture like this. 
In step three, you would be taking the derivative of both sides of your formula with respect to time. That's the key thing about related rates is you're always going to be taking the derivative with respect to time. So in our Pythagorean theorem example, the derivative of x squared would be 2x times dx dt plus the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dt and then finally the derivative of r squared would be 2r times dr dt. So remember that chain rule for each term you're taking the derivative with respect to time. And in the last step you would plug in what you know and solve for the remaining quantity. So let's say you knew the value of x and y and r you knew the rate that x was changing and the rate that r was changing, the hypotenuse, but you needed to find the rate that this side was changing. You would plug in everything that you know in order to solve for the remaining variable, and that's how you would set up any related rates problem. Next up is number four, how to write the equation of a tangent line, and this is almost surely going to end up on your AP calculus exam in some form. So first, what do you need to write the equation of a tangent line is you need two things. You need to have a point and a slope. So let's say we had some point with the coordinate pair a, b. Well, I would also need to know the slope, and in calculus, that's the derivative at this x value. So the slope would be f prime of a. With a point and a slope, what you would do to write the equation of a line is you would use point-slope form, since that's the information you have. And point-slope form is something you need to make sure you know, and that is y minus whatever is the y-coordinate in your problem equals the slope, in this case, I'll write f prime of a, multiplied by x minus whatever is the x-coordinate in the problem. And then sometimes you may have to write this tangent line and then estimate a value by plugging in an x value that they give you in the problem. And next up is one of my favorites in all of AP Calculus, and that is using L'Hopital's rule. And it's one of the favorites of my students too. Now the key thing we need to remember is we can't always use L'Hopital's rule in a limit problem. We can only use L'Hopital's rule in some situations. And that is this scenario. If you have the limit as x approaches c of some function f of x divided by a function g of x, the only time you can use L'Hopital's rule is if direct substitution results in either 0 divided by 0 or any combination of positive or negative infinity divided by positive or negative infinity. These forms are called the indeterminate forms. So remember, you can only use L'Hopital's rule if after direct substitution it results in one of these indeterminate forms. And L'Hopital's rule is this. The limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x would be equivalent to the limit as x approaches c of the ratio of the derivatives. Now, if after direct substitution of c into this results in one of the indeterminate forms, then you would repeat the process again and you get to use L'Hopital's rule a second time. All right, that's it everybody. We have just gone through all the five most important things you need to know for unit four of AP Calculus. If you found this helpful, go ahead and give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe so you can see future videos that will help you in AP Calculus. Have a great day everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.